Down Home Sports, covering all the sports in Ellis County. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Located off of 287 in Middle Oakland, Texas. And Go City Pizza and Burgers. For artisan burgers, pizzas, and ice cream, make sure you go where it's delicious to Doe City Pizza and Burgers, located in Red Oak, right across from the high school. Elite Foot and Body in Middle Oakland, Texas, off of 663. Make sure you go to get your body rejuvenated after hard workouts and great competitions. With today's busy schedules, we need flexibility. Pinnacle Bank is the way banking should be. With ATM Live, powered by the people. They have hours that make it easy. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can just pull up to one of the easy to access ATM where there's always someone live, friendly, and knowledgeable to help you. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. welcoming in middle othian heritage the jags baseball team uh let me rephrase that undefeated district champ jags baseball team we got coach blackwell we got blake wilhort we got briley green with us thank y'all so much for taking time out of your evenings we appreciate it and again congratulations on that district championship feel pretty good coach yes it does it feels really good um you know, anytime you can win a district championship, this is really back to back for us too. You know, because we didn't get a chance to play last year, so that's definitely like the first uh, you know big benchmark of the season. So we were able to check that off and to, to win all the games. I think it's tough to do, you know. Um, and so I was proud of the kids' focus, and maintaining focus, and getting that done. So yeah, it was good. Well, Blake, as a as a guy who does a lot of uh, up and down behind the dish. Uh, a long season career on you, and Coach alluded to it, the focus it's got to take to go 12-0 and in a district in a long season. You guys are rolling. How's it feel? Uh, how, how did it feel at the beginning and then to get rolling, to fight through, and to come out 12-0 and in district? Uh, you guys feeling pretty confident going into the playoffs? It was good. I mean, just to be undefeated, you know, I mean, that's pretty hard to do, is just staying focused the whole time. And, you know, we – we're, we're, we're rolling right now. You know, we're hitting our peak and we're getting better every time we go out there. And right now we don't think anybody can beat us. Awesome. Well, it's got to be a little contributed in to those arms you roll out there. And Briley, I know you're one of those guys. Last time you went out, seven innings, no earned, nine Ks. I mean, I, I, that sounds pretty good when I read that stout line. Let me ask you, how are you feeling up there on the bump? Uh, and, and, and how's it feel knowing you got a guy back there that you can trust? How much more confident does that make you? Um, when I got a guy back there like Blake, and I can throw almost any pitch, and he's I know that he's going to block it, or say it's I'm throwing a strikeout pitch, and he's going to block it up, throw it to first, count as a strikeout. But when I got a guy back there like that, he always gives me a chance to win. Well, Coach – Let's talking about Briley and even Andrew Graham, 9-0 and on the year, broke your strikeout record there at Heritage. Seems like you got a pretty good one-two punch, and and they're not the only two as well. But uh, how that's, much – go ahead. Oh, no, I'll, go ahead. I didn't, I, I didn't I know you were finishing the question. No, I, I, didn't hear what, what was the I was going to say, uh, as a team, when you've got guys up there that, one, when you look at their stats, as good as they are, it just shows that they're throwing strikes. And, and it seems like they're letting their defense work. Talk about how much better that makes you all as a team, knowing when you put somebody on the mound that it's not – if they if you get beat, it's not because you walked them around. It's because you made the team work. Right. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. We've been preaching that all year, you know, with our guys, you know, throwing strikes and competing and, you know, having those guys – Get it, you know, trust their defense and, you know, having Blake behind a play like we alluded to earlier has been huge for us, you know, just trusting him and, 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 and talking with him throughout the games about strategies and things. But, yeah, I mean, Briley's been 
phenomenal for us. Um, and, and so is Graham, like you mentioned. And then we got, you know, another senior we've had him on here before, Caden Sales. Um, we've got a young kid that we brought up um, that's got a chance to help us quite a bit. And, and then uh, named Patey, Braden Patey. And um, so you know, on top of that, we have another kid that's gotten some good innings throughout the year, um, Ryan Purdy. So we've got a, we feel really good about our staff, you know, in general. And so like Blake was talking about, you know, we, you know, some guys, some teams will have, you know, a guy that throws 90 something and, and, you know, they have a stud and, and then, you know, we don't really know after that. Um, but we feel like that we get in a three game series with anybody that, you know, our guys are all, you know, about the same. They all throw strikes. They all compete hard. They all trust their defense, and uh, it's just that's how we've rolled all year long. You know, whoever's gotten the ball in the mound has, has gone out and 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 uh, given us a chance to win every game. So, yeah, I really am proud of our, our staff, and, and including Blake with that, with the you know being behind the plate. I mean, it's a definitely a blessing, and, and so our defense has played pretty well over uh, throughout the year. You know, overall we've made some big plays and kind of got back on the double play train last week a little bit, which is nice, and so. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, man. So we, you know, like I said, we we don't really have a, a standout number one guy. You know, we just have a staff full of guys that we trust and count on, and and uh, we feel like we can put them in any situation against any team. And they're gonna, you know, like I said, those strikes give us the best chance to win. So it's been good. It's definitely been a big part of our success um, so far. We, you know, anticipated being that way the rest of the way through. So it's been fun. Well, if anybody knows anything about baseball from at the top level, but especially in high school, your your offense is going to get you to the postseason, but your pitching is going to take you somewhere. And it seems like you guys have the depth. Blake, talk about the communication that goes in with the staff. You're catching a bunch of different guys, like you said, and a bunch of different different dudes who can contribute. Talk about in a practice or in a bullpen, how you build that rapport, the communication, so that way when you guys get in a game, you're on the same page and you got confidence to call whatever pitch and, and know that, that, that you're going to do your job back there. Yeah, it's just – yeah, just getting with them, like you said, when they're in the bullpen and seeing what they're confident in throwing. And then during the game, getting with them every in, every in inning and seeing and scouting the players every at bat. And when they come back, we know exactly what pitch they're – they're not doing again. They're doing well against, and just what they're feeling confident in throwing, and what they can feel to get somebody out is just what we all talk about every inning, every bullpen practice, everything. Well, Briley, uh, talk about how good it feels when you're on the mound and you got a team putting up six, seven, eight, twelve runs. Uh, to to know that you can go out there with comfort. Talk about having a, a great offense and how it helps you continue to do what you do well. Um, when you go out there and you're up by five, six runs, like you said, it takes a whole lot of pressure off. Like, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't necessarily mean slow down and take it easy. It's just that you know that you don't always have to be perfect because nobody can be perfect. And so you just go out there, throw strikes, let your defense play, and know that you can get it done on the offensive side too. Now, Coach, uh, I saw something on Twitter the other day from the Heritage Baseball account, um, and I'm going to ask you about it because it seems like it might be a reflection as your team. It was talking about Arkansas, and it was a pic picture. Of, I, I believe it was their second baseman. I'm not for sure, but uh, two strikes, choking up on the bat, highest level, number one team in the nation, uh, up there competing, getting it done. There's a reason they're number one. Talk about that approach and how you try to instill it in those guys. You see so many people trying to swing out of their shoes nowadays, launch ankles and whatnot. But talk about the approach and what wins when you get down to two strikes and compete. Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad you saw that, man. That was pretty cool. You know, it's uh, – yeah, I saw that. I was like, man, look at this, you know. But that's something we've preached, you know, really hard this year you know we kind of have we have a little acronym if you you know come to the games you'll hear us say six twos you know and, and we say six twos and it reminds us our hitters you know the six twos that we talked about and, and what we're supposed to do in that situation and and you know really it comes down to you know we, we've talked about two strike hitting we've worked it throughout the years but it comes down to are your guys willing to buy into it or not you know and 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 so that's why you know i, I feel as though this is the best team that we've had um, as far as a bunch of players that just buy into what we're trying to do and buy into unselfishness, you know, so much. These kids are smart. They're good players. They play a lot, um, you know, but but it comes down to do you really want to choke up two inches? Do you want to scoot up two inches? Do you want to crowd the plate two inches? Do you want to extend the strike zone in every angle two inches? You know, all the six twos that we talk about, 
and I've seen more so than ever before this year with teams I've coached over 15 years of guys that are going to battle off tough pitches with two strikes and foul pitches off, foul pitches off, draw a tough walk, you know, get a quality at bat, make the pitcher throw you seven, eight, nine pitches, and, and even if he gets you out, you know, now we're, we're getting their ace to have to throw pitches or whoever's on the mound. So it's been a huge aspect to our success this year. I think offensively is just the willingness to – to use that approach. And uh, like I said, we, you know, I did a little research and, and, and stole this little kind of uh, article, you know, and we kind of created the six twos out of it. And so you'll hear our kids from the dugout, hey, six twos, six twos, you know, that's not even me saying it anymore. They're, they're, they're reminding each other of, of what we're looking for in those situations. So yeah, it's been cool. And then, you know, just to retweet something like that from that account kind of validates it, I think. And, and like you said, you know, you got a great team. Um, like Arkansas, you know, this, this, that's buying into those kind of things, which like you said, to create, you know, great success. So that's what it's all about. So that's definitely been a big part of our offensive, uh, I think, um, kind of transformation this year, you know? Well, coach, I'm not going to say you stole it. I'll just say you borrowed it. I think there's, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, I think there, there, there's been coaches, uh, borrowing stuff for, for a long, long time. So we're, we're just going to say you borrowed it. And so, but uh, yeah, I just I just borrowed it and you just borrowed it a little bit, but it was really good. I just hey, I shared. It. I mean, I read the article to him. You know, I didn't I didn't act like I invented it. I said, hey, look what I found, guys. This sounds great. Let's let's roll with this. So anyway, yeah, nothing innovative, but uh, did do some research and 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 did care about it. So well, awesome. Well, Blake, talk about uh, being back in the postseason. We all know what happened last year. Of course, you didn't you didn't get to go, uh, but the year before. Like you said, y'all are in the postseason district champ, so it is kind of back-to-back. -back. How good does it feel to be back there and to, to get to play a playoff series uh, under the lights for, for Heritage? feels great. I mean, I've been waiting for it again for two years. My sophomore year, we went and got beat out in the second round, you know. It was just – it was it's an awesome experience, and these young guys are really need to take it in because just like you said last year, I mean, it, it was gone like that, and we thought we had a really good chance to go really far away last year. But to be back this year is amazing, and we think we can go far away again this year. Well, Briley, what's the what's the atmosphere like in the locker room as, as the playoffs approach? Uh, it does. Do you get a different feel? I don't want to say you get there and and, and you get nervous because it's it's a good thing. But do you feel a little different as you know that that uh, the winner go home is approaching? Um. A lot more serious. Everybody's way more serious. Nobody's joking around. Everybody's ready to go, getting ready for the game. Like, some people listen to music and stuff like that to get ready. And that's pretty much what it is. It's just no joking around. Be serious. And don't take it for granted. There you go. Well, Coach, uh, Coach Blackwell, I want to ask you, on this team, I mean, is there something – that's going to stick out to you that maybe people on the outside looking in don't know? Something you're going to look back on this team and say, you know what, people didn't shine a light on this or people didn't recognize this, but but this is is what defined this team. Do you have anything that sticks out? Yeah, you know, uh, I kind of alluded to it earlier, I guess, you know, just about the, the, the team, the teamwork, you know, just the unselfishness, I guess. And, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest thing, you know, moving through this that I've noticed about this team but you know we just we really didn't you know have any any big you know we weren't ranked really high which I don't care about those things but you know the kids look at that I look at it too you know but we haven't been ranked very high we've been down around you know 20-ish and stuff and we, we kind of worked our way up slowly but just not a lot of hoopla around the team you know not a lot of guys that you know are doing this or that but you know I just I think I'll look back and, and so far it's been probably the most fun I've had coaching and I'll, you know, maybe ever, maybe in my 15 years, you know, just because of the group of guys we have, you know, and, and it's, we just have guys that are unselfish. And, you know, when I check, when I check our grades every week, I've got, you know, a bunch of guys that are straight A students and guys that are in AP classes and guys that do other things and, and are leaders in the, in the, in the school as well. And so this would be probably one of the teams I would want, you know, be most excited about how they've represented, you know, Heritage Baseball. And, um, you know, it's just not always been that way. But we, you know, we really have a great group of kids. And I just think that they, um, you know, I just don't think anybody's given us the, the credit that, that that we've been due. And, and we're okay with that, man. We've kind of played with a chip on our shoulder all year because of that. And um, like Blake said earlier, you know, 
we're kind of peaking right now. We feel like that we're kind of coming together at the at the right time. The offense is starting to click and, and things are starting to move and shake. And so if we can put this thing all together, we feel like, um, you know, it'll be for the kids, you know, be, it'll be the most memorable uh, that we've ever had probably, you know, just the, the group of guys, teamwork and that kind of thing. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, do you have any details for us on the, on the first playoff game yet? <laughs> I do not. We were looking at that. We've been talking about that a lot. Uh, we've seen a couple of the teams that are uh, right now. It'll, it looks like it'll either be Melissa or Van Alstine. And so we would have told you Van Alstine was in the driver's seat on that um, until Friday night. And now we would tell you that it's probably still 50, 50. Um, there's a bunch of different scenarios that could happen there, but uh, we feel like it'll be one of those two teams, but we're really not sure. We're not going to know probably until next Friday. Uh, <laughs> You know, unless something crazy happens tomorrow, it'll probably be Friday night or Saturday before we know, and then probably won't have any details till Sunday as far as, you know, when and where and that kind of thing. But um, we know we'll be ready. We got six practices um, between now and then uh, and a warm-up game. So we're going to – we talked about focusing on that today and then realizing that we're playing our third season starts now, and, and this is the season here that, that's win or go home. And so that's when it becomes more and more fun. That's what we've been working towards all year long. And, all the COVID and all the snowmageddon and all the practices and all the grinding and blood, sweat, and tears. This is why we did it all. And so it's, it's fun time now. So we're going to go out there and, and give them our best shot. And if, if, if somebody's you know going to beat us, they're going to have to come out and play their best game. And awesome. if that's the case, then I can live with that, you know, so. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your evening again to join me. Um, I wish y'all the best of luck uh, going into the postseason. Coach, uh, when's that warm up game? Uh, if people want to get out there and, and watch. Yeah, warm-up game will be this Friday in Godly. So, it'll be at Godly, okay. uh, who's another – I think they, they won their district. So, it'll be a good uh, a good opponent for us to get out and get some work and get our pitchers some work and hitters. So, it'll be in Godly at 7 p.m. on Friday. And I don't believe there's any – you don't have to buy tickets. I think it's just open. You can come in and go and, and watch the game. And so, yeah, it should be, it should be fun. Awesome. Well, well, Blake, Briley, uh, thank you all for coming on. Wish you all the best of luck. Coach, go get them. We'll be rooting for you all the way. You got a great squad. Keep it rolling. And uh, anything you need from us, let us know. But uh, we're behind you guys, and uh, I know you all do great things. So thank you all so much for coming on. Hopefully we can have you all on here in a few weeks talking about a, uh, maybe a, a regional win or a, or a state semis uh, win or a state championship. How about that? Sure. Let's go, good. man. We we appreciate the coverage, man. You guys do a great job, so we'll be looking forward to that next that the next Zoom call for sure. Well, thank you, thank you, and then hopefully we get to a point to where this Zoom stuff can end, and maybe we can get y'all in studio, sit down, and uh, get a good discussion, holding up a trophy. That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, I'm in on that one for sure. <laughs> so, well, thank you, guys. Y'all have a good evening, and we'll talk to y'all later. Thank you, you too. Yes, sir. Thank you. In Ellis County, there's only one place to go. Go City Pizza and Burgers. But don't worry, they got you also covered on ice cream as well. All kinds of flavors made in-house, just specially for you. And toppings to boot, as many as you like. So count your blessings for Doe City Pizza and Burgers and those big old scoops the size of Texas made just the way you want. So head on down to Doe City where the service and food are both delicious. Doe City Pizza and Burgers located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from the high school. Come on down and try. Folks, we're joined by the number five in the state team, the Middle Othian Panther Wrestling. We got Coach Shippers, we got Felix Saunders, we got Marshall Hodges, and Coach. Just talk about how your boys progressed through the season in this this time. Well, we had a short season. We were a little bit nervous about uh, getting wrestling going because wrestling wasn't very a COVID friendly sport. So we got started uh, with all these duels. Um, I believe, you know, looking at the team and talking with Coach Reed, we were a uh, tournament-style team instead of a dual team, but uh, we pulled together, and uh, I believe our record was like 17-5, and five, something like that, yeah. as a dual team, which was awesome. You know, I, was, I couldn't say how proud I was of these guys for 
you know, going through a tough season like this. And, uh, you know, and then when it came to the tournament style right away, you know, with district and uh, regional and state, you know, they shined. Um, you know, they outdid themselves. You know, we, we wanted to be first, um, but, but that didn't happen. But we came up, you know, second in district, second in regional, and then, of course, fifth overall at state. And to go in there with just four guys at state and every one of them medaled. You know, so I was that that I was real proud of that. The the future is bright, and you know the the most thing I was excited about was you know Coach Reed was there at state. He got to see you know his two seniors that he had been with, and you know brought into the program to go back to the finals again. You know Felix going up four weight classes, you know, and and still getting the chance to defend his state title was that that was awesome. You know, and it was a tough weight class. There was a lot of guys in it. That was that was the weight class right there, in my opinion. And, you know, and then Marshall coming back and then winning, uh, you know, his first state championship and going out as a senior, putting an exclamation point on his year. And I really liked, you know, Coach Reed being there because it was just kind of a changing of the guard. He got to see his, you know, his guys leave and go out, you know, the way they did. And, you know, then the two freshmen coming in and meddling, you know, it was just a nice – to me, that was just a nice, peaceful transition, and it was it was a beautiful moment. And I couldn't be more proud of all the guys, you know, on the team. So I, I was proud of the year. Um, we had some goals that we wanted to reach. We didn't get there, but you know, I, I can't I can't be more proud of the guys today than you know the way they did and the way they handled themselves and had a had a good season. Well, folks, if you don't know this, we're going to kind of go over the stats with each one of these guys a little bit. Felix, I mean, 98 wins, three district titles, two-time regional champ, state runner-up finish at 152, and a state title at 126 for your career. Just talk about what it takes to be that kind of wrestler. It takes a lot of dedication. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I learned the hard way that you're not going to that things aren't going to come easy in this sport. And I had to change my work ethic and everything. And it, it was real tough, but I wouldn't want it to be any other way. That's pretty awesome, man. Well, Marshall Hodge is here. Marshall's going to finish his career with 123 wins, which amazes me, Coach, because Marshall don't get to wrestle every, every meet. So uh, 123 wins, four district championships, three regional championships, state runner-up, and a state championship this year. Marshall, just talk about, you know, you missed it by a point last year, and you win it by a breakaway this year. Just talk about the dichotomy between the two things. Well, last year was just – it was a rough year. I mean, I knew it was going to be a hard hard time winning the state meet last year. I was at a – I was just at a brick wall. And I was just thinking, man, how am I going to do this? And, you know, I had a plan, but apparently it didn't work out. So, you know, I came the next year and I saw what I had to go against. And I'm like, I got to get ready for this. And I worked, I worked through it and I figured out that I can finish this hard and win this the way I wanted it to. And that's what happened at the very end. And that's how we won it. That's pretty amazing. And, and, Coach, I mean, last year coming in second place as a team, right? This year fifth, and you weren't that far behind in jumping up a couple of spots. But just talk about these younger guys also that were out there wrestling. I mean, you got Beerman, you got Tompkins that were out there. And I know, like, Maddie Hodges, if it would have been a normal year, she would have wrestled, um, you know, because she qualified for state. But this year, because of the rules and the trunc truncation that you're talking about, you know, she didn't get that opportunity. But just talk about that young underclassman and how impressive they were at this tournament. Oh, they were outstanding. I mean, uh, and also Tyler Knight, who got uh, fourth, yeah. that would have been in the mix too if it hadn't uh, shaken up the way. And they, the tournament bracket was different this year. It was, you know, so they couldn't wrestle five matches. And, you know, it is what it is and kind of – it, it, it did hurt us. Um, we got a we got a bad draw with those guys, but you still have to wrestle and wrestle the best in order to win. On the unfortunate side, um, Eli, 
who lost his first match could only go for fifth. And if you think about that, if we had, you know, everything turned out the same and we had our normal bracket or something, I would have a monster in the back door, you know, going yeah. for third. He didn't have the opportunity to go for third. He could only get fifth because of the way the, the bracket was set up. But there would have been a monster in there, you know, going for that and getting his points and all that good stuff, which at the same time other teams would have been the same way. So it still would have been a challenge. But, you know, him coming in, you know, his – his his weight cutting, he was, you know, he was a 126 walking around, and he maintained that 113 weight class, you know, to a T. And, you know, he's a grown boy. That's what's tough with freshmen. <laughs> They're growing during the year, and he was growing out of that weight since the season was so late. You know, if it had been early, he, he would have been a lot finer. And, uh, you know, he wrestled a tough opponent at the, at the very beginning. We got caught, but then he just bowled through it got in shape and went after it. And, you know, I couldn't be more proud of that guy. You know, I'm looking for great things from him um, for next year and the years to come. And then Carson Tompkins, of course, he's, he's just been a monster on the mat, you know, basically undefeated. Uh, got DQ'd because he had the wrong kind of tights. He couldn't get them off fast enough. But uh, wow. he was undefeated. And, uh, you know, he beat all those guys that took second and beat them badly. You know, and that Branson Britton, who was the number one seed, won it all. He was just good. You know, he was he was real good. And, you know, we faced him in the semifinals. And, you know, I've never seen Carson, you know, get beat like that. That guy was just on another level. And I see Carson in the future, you know, looking like that because he's so good as a freshman right now and maybe even better, you know, than that guy. And he'll just, uh, dom you know, those two guys I think will dominate you know, state. And, you know, we got a map, a road map of how it needs to be done to win the whole thing. And uh, that's, that's our plan, you know, hopefully next year, but, you know, definitely in four years. Well, and Felix, you know, let's just talk about you for a second. I mean, number one, where is wrestling going to take you? Do you got some offers out there or anything like that? And then number two, you know, you've got a, you've got a brother that does this, you know, how much are you going to be around to support them next year and to keep that Panther winning tradition going? Uh, I'll be wrestling next year for Briarcliff University, but I'm going to do everything I can up until I leave to, to get them ready for next season and motivate them to win a state title as a team and both individually. But I'm going to do – yeah, but like I said, I'm going to do everything I can to get That's them back. Cool. Awesome, man. And, and Coach, is it not good – Marshall, I'm going to get to you in just one second, okay? But, Coach, is it not good to have two guys that are this competitive, this good, but they also not only just look after themselves, they are team-oriented? Oh, yeah. It's, it's been a blessing. I mean, they, they have been really team-oriented. I think, you know, a lot of the times they were upset. You know, even though they'd win gold or something like that, they'd be more upset with the whole team, you know didn't achieve its goal or something like that, you know. So they, you know, they have been – they're going to be missed. There, There's some holes definitely to fill. We got some guys coming in that will, you know, that will replace them. But, you know, they've left a mark on uh, Midlothian wrestling and, you know, the town obviously. And they will definitely be missed. I, You know, my regret is I didn't get – get to coach them for another season, you know, so that's, that, that'd be nice, but uh, they have to move on. And I hope I, you know, in my short year here, you know, my first year here that I've left them with something and, you know, they go on and move on to bigger, better things. And of course, Felix going to wrestle at Briarcliff and uh, Marshall playing football at Angelo state, you know, and that's, you know, we're going to keep up with them and wish them well. And, you know, and they're, they're going to leave a legacy behind and we're going to just try to keep it going for the alumni. Well, and Marshall, going back to your championship match, you're going against, I believe the guy's name was Aiden Balder. Is that correct? I think that's Butler. it. Yes, Butler, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, somebody must have mistyped it out there. But you're 23 and 0. He's 23 and 1. I mean, that was a t that looked like a a physical match. Did you? I mean, what what did, what do you have to have in that gas tank after having that much mass pushed against you for that long? To break out that last second I mean it just I had a whole game plan against him I just I studied him a little bit I saw how he wrestled 
And I noticed that he tries to, he does this one specific move he likes to do, which he tries to take a, a, a sweep single and he couldn't do it with me. So his goal was with me when he finally couldn't do it, he tried to push on me. And I just kept putting underhooks in and just circling them and getting them tired in which it worked out real perfectly. And he couldn't do anything. So it just, it worked out just perfectly in my position. Well, Felix, come back to you real quick. What do you have to say about, you know, not just the past two years. The past two years were great. But y'all two are basically like the first guys through this program. You know, the first full-fledged deal. What has this program meant to you, and what has it left you with the ability to go out and achieve? Felix? It's been a lot to me. Um, they're more – everybody, every year, every team has been more so a family to me, and they've left the – a mark in my heart that'll stay with me forever and I love every single one of them and just seeing the success of everybody and the success that will continue to happen it's going to motivate me to keep doing good keep pushing myself in the future awesome Marshall you know it's the same thing what Felix said you know it's it's just so sad that we're, we're leaving this team next year and you know, I, I love this team so much. And, you know, I just can't wait to see how they become in the next years to, to come and as a Midlothian Panther in wrestling. And, you know, just because just I'm going to Angela State doesn't mean I'm not going to be seeing them. I'm going to be coming down. Not just cheering on my sister, but the other, like Carson, Eli, Tyler, and so on, just cheering them on and watching them. Well, Coach, we talked about a few of the wrestlers that y'all have that made, made the – State bracket, right? But you got some other people that didn't necessarily make it this year, but have come a long way. You know, uh, it seemed like you just had pieces that were just kept building and building, and you were getting close to being where you had that dual team going. So, what can we expect next year from the Middle Ocean Panther wrestling team? Well, hopefully, we get a regular season. <laughs> that, that'll be big for us. Um, you know, we got uh, Kay Tompkins coming in and filling in for Marshall, and he's he's good. And we got uh, Nick Selly uh, filling at 145, so it kind of helps with the you know the loss of Felix and uh, and Marshall. And then you know we also have Carson and Eli. We have a couple others coming in. You know, we're just plugging in the holes right now. We've got our uh, junior high starting tomorrow. And we're going to have that going. And then we'll have our camps this summer to meet the young guys. And we're going to get the, you know, the uh, youth program going again. And so we're going to have, you know, and then we have Tyler, of course, coming back. And uh, Madeline Hodges, we're going to build up the girls team around her. And, you know, and we have that leadership and Tyler who really did well this year. And we're excited about all those guys. And, you know, we're just going to fill in with the other guys. You know, we have Sonny, Gio, and um, – you know, a bunch of others that are going to be great wrestlers for us. And uh, they're going to they're going to catch on real fast with those veteran guys. And uh, it's nowhere to go but up. From well, Coach, where can people go to find out about these camps? I mean, wrestling's not in every school around here. So how can they find out about them and learn a little bit more about them? It's on the uh, MISD athletic website. Um, they can click okay. on camps there, and then it gives information about football, softball, all those sports, and we're on there. And uh, we're running two camps uh, the second week of June, I believe. And uh, one's for the first through sixth graders, and then the other one's for the seventh through ninth graders. And they'll be early in the morning. So uh, we'll take – you know, that'll be a week. And then we're going to have the mat room open and let them know. And and uh, the freestyle season's coming up, of course, too. It's, it's already started. So we're going to get into a little bit of that to – help our folks style and, uh, you know, future is bright with uh, Midlothian wrestling. Well, guys, hey, man, I, we, I really do appreciate it. Uh, hope you all know that we follow you all all the time and try to make sure that we get you all out there. But congratulations to both you seniors on, A, great years, but more than importantly than that, great careers. Okay. Uh, Ellis County is very proud of you. Coach Shivers, can't wait to see what heights you take the team to. Elite Foot and Body Therapeutic Massage and Assisted Stretching. We push our bodies to the limit. Trying to gain that extra edge. To be ready to take the field 
when that whistle blows. So take care of the most important equipment, your body, with massage, compression therapy, assisted stretching. So when you're ready to play, you're ready to play at an elite level. Elite foot and body, therapeutic massage and assisted stretching in Middle Lothian, Texas, off of 663. Call 214-817-8545 for your appointment today. Are you hungry for the best burgers, fries, and pizza in Ellis County? Well, stop by Doe City Pizza Burgers, where the ingredients are fresh every day and stacked up just the way you like them. Custom seasoned fries and burgers right off the grill on in-house fresh homemade buns. So head on down to Doe City Pizza and Burgers where everything there is dough delicious. Doe City Pizza and Burgers is located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from Red Oak High School. Make sure you come down and have the best burgers and service in Ellis County. gentlemen guess what we got going here today we got a little bearish baseball action coming with us we got coach west we got coach uh nate aguanaga carter fagan cannon gadisa and dylan clark gentlemen welcome into the program thank you for having us no problem sure, thank coach. You for having us. 
I mean, you go six and five in district, 11 11 on the season. I mean, that's a pretty good season in that district, in that 10 4 8 district. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'm very, extremely proud of these guys. They, they, they show up and work every day. Uh, they've gotten progressively better every day. Uh, they don't back down from anybody. We've had some big wins this season. Well, and that, I mean, that looks like it. I mean, I'm looking at batting averages over the season, and there's a couple of outliers here, but, you know, Dylan's at 333 for the season, uh, Fagan's at 299, and Nate over there sitting at 308, 308, excuse me. And I know Cannon has really come on during this time when you're playing district. Just talk about, you know, what these guys are doing that are working for you. Are you, are you slashing a little bit more? Are you just – everybody's got a good groove right now, Coach. I think it's just everybody has got has gotten in a groove right now. I mean, we've we played a bunch of games. We're kind of peaking at the right time right now. Uh, when uh, we, we bat Dylan lead off, and he's got like you said a, a real high batting average. So when he gets a hit, then then Carter steps up. I might bar, uh, bunt Carter. Uh, Carter's been swinging the bat real well right now, and then Nate's batting in the three hole and Cannon in the four hole. So it's like they all kind of build off of each other, and it's and it's really worked out for us in uh, district play. Okay. Hey, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Real quick, this ain't school. You can leave your mic on, okay? You ain't going to bug me in the least bit, all right? Yeah. So, Dylan, real quick, buddy, how does it feel to get that lead off and get the tempo set for your team? Uh, it feels good, you know, just like getting the team hype and just get that rhythm going, and it starts the game off good for us. Well, and Cannon, I know your bat's turned on a lot here lately. What's the approach you're taking at the bat, at the plate? I'm just looking for that first pitch strike. You gotta jump on it early. Can't get too can't get too far behind the count. Well, and Carter, I mean, you got somebody setting the table for you. You know, you're that second guy up there, really moving them around really good this year. Uh, you know, at, you know, as a as a senior, how much pride do you take in the ability of just getting that guy to that next bag? You know, going 90, putting him 180. Oh, it's a lot. I, I love doing it. Just anything to help my team win. That's cool. Well, and Nate, you know, got to see you behind the plate a couple of times. We've got a couple of really good highlights of you filling some bunts and just laying your body out there and just doing all the great things. You know, at your senior year, does this record, you know, reflect the buy-in that you guys have had this whole season? Um, in a way, it does. But, uh, you know, the, when you talk about the buy-in, the buy-in is, is way greater than, you know, the, the record can reflect as far as a, a group of guys that I've been in on this team for four years. And I think this year, you know, we're all bought in and we're all on the same page. Well, Coach, you know, you had seven returning starters this year. You had a four-game win streak as your biggest of the year. you kind of gone 50-50 down the last little bit here of the season. But – I mean, what are the things that you're seeing personally? I mean, is it just the flashing of the leather or everybody's backing each other up? I mean, is it just the team, you know, somebody, somebody goes down, somebody's picking them back up on it? It's all those things. They, they like Nate was saying, they've all bought in. Uh, those guys get real hype in the dugout. We got some guys that, you know, that are bench players right now, but they they have a role. They, they, uh, they, they keep it real hype. In the field, you know, Carter's play, Carter and uh, Cannon are in the middle, shortstop and second, and they're communicating with the outfield. Nate's behind the plate. He's been behind the plate for four years. He does a great job managing the game. He communicates with our corners. He communicates with our pitcher. Uh, Nate calls the game, and he's he's been doing it for a while, and he, he calls a great game. Uh, we've had a, a, a couple of shutouts this year. Uh, Dylan and Cannon uh, have combined for no hitters. Carter's been up there with, with some uh, great outings on the mound, and, and Nate's back there calling games, and he does a really good job of it. it it's just all around uh, buy in. Yes, sir. Well, and Dylan, you know, you got a 299 ERA as a sophomore. I mean, pretty darn good, man. Pretty darn good. But how, how great is it to have that security blanket of having that veteran like Nate back there? calling those pitches for you and knowing when to stop and come out and have a mound visit and just keep you under control. It was great, you know, just like having him back there with the experience and like telling me where to throw the ball and just, it just feels great. Well, and Nate, 
you know, not a lot of catchers in high school get the privilege to call their own game. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's got to mean a lot to you in the trust that Coach West has instilled in you. Yes, sir, it does. It means a lot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah it means a lot, uh, especially when you talk about trust. You know, not only is Coach West trusting me, the uh, two other assistant coaches are trusting me. The team, the guys on the bench are trusting me, and the team on the field is out there trusting me. So it's, uh, it's a lot of weight, but um, I like to be held accountable. And so, so far, I mean, for the most part, we've, I've been able to perform. Well, and Cannon, you know, playing that middle infield, there's got to be a lot of communication going on. Who's covering here? You know, who's, <laughs> who's going to take this throw? Double play balls. What is that relationship like between you and Carter? Uh, me, me and Carter are talking all game. On and off the field, a real good buzz. And just it's all we always find a way to make something fun. And we communicate real well, but we also get our job done. Well, and Carter, I mean, being a senior, being back there, you know, you're going to see the game from a little bit different perspective than Nate is. How, how valuable has it been for you this year to have that leadership capability to come up from second base and say, hey, guys, here's what I'm seeing. You know, maybe even communicate with Nate a little bit, give him a little tip on a batter, you know, for that next call pitch. Uh, you know, well, we've been playing so long together. Like, we just have this chemistry that's just unbreakable. Like, it's just there no matter what. So is it, is it just a little wink tonight to tell him, hey, well, I think this guy's going to bunt? Yeah, it's just just something we we both know. That's pretty cool. Well, Coach, we got playoffs coming up, okay? Came yes, in sir. second district, and I think that's – it's a pretty little salty district you're in. And yes, second place in that district is nothing to sneeze at, folks. No. Let me tell you straight up. But, Coach, just as a team whole – how do you feel about this going in this playoffs? I mean, are you going to be going for the one game? Or are you going to go be going for the series? You know, that, those are the big questions everybody's going to ask. Yes, sir. But I, I just think that you are built with your pitching and everything that you could take either option and be successful at. Yeah, it, it's looking like it's going to be Anna uh, from that district up there. And that district up there is really tough. Salty. Salina, Aubrey, Anna, Melissa – a lot of good baseball being played up there. And uh, I've had a scout go watch Anna, and I went and watched Anna on Saturday. So I'm thinking we're going to go series uh, okay. with those guys. They've got uh, the coach's son. His name is Raleigh Hector. Uh, he is a, a Texas A&M commit. Uh, he pitches for them uh, and does a really good job doing it. You know, there, There's a reason he's committed to Texas A&M. He swings a good yeah. bat. Uh, so I think that the best bet for us is, is we're going to go for a series with them. Hey, you know, but guys, don't you think, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter who's on the, on the mound, right? That's correct. Fastball is a fastball. Curveball is a curveball. Change-ups go out of the park, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So, Dylan, I mean, what do y'all want – what's your philosophy for these playoffs? I mean, what do y'all, as a pitcher, you know, are you going to be pitching to contact? You know, are you going to be going for the Ks? What's what's going through your head right now? Uh, I like to pitch the contact, so like I can just let's keep the pitches low and pitch longer throughout the game. Well, hey man, ain't nothing wrong with that. And Cannon, I mean, y'all back there slapping the leather around a little bit. You know how important is that first out of this? You know, once y'all get in a playoff game, how important is that first out going to be for y'all defensively? It's real important if. As soon as the game starts off, we can't start off with the air because everybody's heads will be down and we'll start overthinking. So we got to start off clean and fresh. Awesome. And Carter, you know, that first at bat, I know, you know, when you get in the playoffs, you know, the pressure starts getting on you, you maybe chase a couple pitches. How are you going to, as a senior, going to show the leadership to everybody to be patient during those times? Uh, really, I'm just going to go up there. My approach is usually a swing at the first pitch because those are usually the best ones I see. But if I get behind in the count, then I just sit back, keep my weight back, and hopefully hit a single, have Nate drive me around. That's awesome. Well, Nate, I know you ain't you, – you get loud on the field. You don't normally get loud outside of there. But I'm a, I, get, I want you to get loud, okay? Channel that football, Nate, right now. 
and give me a big old speech and tell everybody in Ferris why they ought to be at this baseball playoff game. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people should be there. I mean, like we talk about buying in, buying in is not me, not Carter. It's the number one to the number 22 on that team. Everybody there is bought in. You know what I mean? It's, it's something that we, we know we have the talent to do. We have the skill set to do it. At that point, it's just about the support system inside of that dugout, outside of that dugout, and through the coaching. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, buying – maybe it will be a three-game series. Buying all three of those tickets will be worth it. You know what I mean? And it's a chance for us to make history. It really is. And something that hasn't been done in a while. So, you know, when we're bought in, we're bought in, and it's it's no joke. That's awesome, man. You got me fired up, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Coach West, you know, you, you have teams that you that you enjoy coaching and stuff. Everybody does. How special is this team this year with all the stuff that's gone on the past two years, right? And the, the type of kids you got here. I mean, they're they're great kids on the on the field and off the field. Just talk about how special this group of young men is. Man, I I, I might start crying, Tater. I'm telling that's you. That's right okay. Now, that's how special these guys are to me. Uh I've talked to them about it before that uh, it, it comes with the territory when you're in this profession that you're gonna spend a lot of time with these guys and there's a reason that I'm, I'm in this profession because I, I I love these guys. I spend more time with these guys than I, I do with my own kids. They are my family. Uh, we talk about family and and, and, some, and the support that we have for each other. Uh, I'm telling you right now, and when it comes to that old analogy of guys that you want in your, your foxhole, all 12 of them, there's 12 on our, our roster. All 12, 12 of them would be in the foxhole with me. They're, they're a special group of guys, and I love every single one of them. Man, I take – Coach, you know, I follow Ellis County sports pretty hardcore. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, you're a great example. I always tell folks there ain't better coaching on the field or off the field than anywhere in Ellis County. And you're a great example of that. And uh, so happy that you're coaching these young men. And, guys, I'm going to leave it up to y'all. Dylan, I'm going to start with you. It's a young career thus far, but how much has Coach West been meant to you? Uh, he just – He's helped me so much with my baseball and just like uh, helping my skills throughout the years or the two years. And it's just, he's helped me a lot. Gannon? Well, this year, Coach West has really made everything fun. And, and like the past couple of years, we haven't really had that team connection and we haven't had fun on the field. But Coach West, he finds ways to. Have fun during practice, but still get your job done and practice what you're going to be playing on the field. And he just – he's a really good leader for all of us. How about you, Nate? Uh, yeah, Coach West is uh, – he's a great coach. He, he holds us accountable for the things that we do, whether it be uh, big or small, in the classroom, on the field. He holds us accountable, and I think he has a great relationship with all of us. You know, we know that we can trust him, whether it be on the baseball field, in the classroom, or anything outside of that. Uh, I've enjoyed having Coach West be my coach these past four years. And Carter? Well, really, he, he really brought the fire back this year. Like we've been – the first year I was here, we've been struggling a little bit. But throughout the years, we've grown more comfortable with each other. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a great guy to look up to great on guy. and off the field. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Coach, I want you to know all of Ellis County is behind you. Folks in Ellis County, you need to come watch this team. They got heart. They got grit. They can hit the ball. They can sling it across the bases. And it's, they're going to be a tough out in this playoff. Coach, we can't – I want to wish you all all the best in the world. Guys, hit them where they ain't. And uh, we'll hopefully see you all in a couple weeks after a couple big old uh, playoff wins, okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Thank you All for right. having us. No problem. We see the future in her. And as she grows, bonds are bigger. Lessons are learned. We plan for her future with those we trust. 
So when the day comes and she's ready to soar, she'll do it knowing there's always someone there. Pinnacle Bank, not just a bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. With May Pearl softball, guess what, folks? We got Coach Whitney. We got Haley Henson. We got Haley Arterberry. And we got Caitlin Fryman. How are y'all folks doing today? Doing well. Doing good. Doing well. Right. Well, Coach, great season. Just talk about, you know, heading off the playoffs and the season, everything that's come up for y'all this year. I think we had a goal. I mean, as I said before with uh, you know, the pandemic and us not getting to play last year, we had a goal set on the playoffs. We knew that uh, we would compete this year and we had specific goals in tournament ball and also in district, you know, we knew that Grandview had the target and, you know, we were after them and, you know, we played some tough games for Grandview and we played a double header with Grandview that didn't go our way, but we learned a lot. And then, like I said, I was telling you before, we played a Red Oak and Italy team to get us ready for playoffs. And, you know, I think overall that, that prepared this year and they're ready to go and wanted it well and you two young ladies were on with me last time and arterberry one of the things coach that's one of the thing, main things from coaches last talk with us was y'all wanted it this year how much did y'all want this and how how anticipating are y'all in some playoff victories i mean it sure was a goal to get there <laughs> And every game, like, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Well, Henson, I mean, you know, I, last we have time I told y'all. To. Go ahead, boy. What would you say, Arterberry? I said we all have the want to. That's good. Well, Henson, let's, uh, last time I told y'all, left side, best side, right? <laughs> so, y'all have been shutting it down over there. And we've actually had some really good highlights. Y'all make some good flashing leather a little bit. Just talk about how that team, how your team has really actually improved on that defensive side. Um, I think for a long time, we just had people that were kind of scared of the ball. They didn't really give an effort like the team that we have right now does. Because I think the people that are on the field now, they want to be there. They want to play. So they're going to do anything in their power to keep their spot and get the outs that we need. Well, and Brian, you know, you went from second base over to third. And mm -hmm. that tra it's kind of a hard transition going to that hot corner. But yeah. just talk about what, what you've done this year to keep improving the way you have. I think just working hard in practice and trying my best and just picking myself up when I make a mistake and just trying hard in practice has helped me. Well, that's phenomenal. And, Coach, I mean, y'all been hitting the ball. Y'all y'all face a lot. We talked about, you know, with Red Oak and Italy. Those are some salty ball clubs. Heritage, you got a girl over there that has 406 strikeouts on the year. And y'all were still putting the ball in play. Just talk about that hitting and, you know, just how that's going to continue through the playoffs. Yeah, that's been a, another focus is because, you know, if, if the goal is to get in the playoffs, I think these girls understand that playoff softball is a lot different than district. And you're going to see higher level of pitching, uh, more strikeouts, and we experienced that on Saturday with Italy, and we kind of had to regroup and talk about how we're going to approach the playoffs, and that means getting in cage, maybe working on the short game a little bit more and add some uh, add some skills and some button runs and stuff like that, something that I'm sometimes not comfortable calling, but, you know, something that I got to get outside the box too and out of my comfort zone sometimes to do, and we've talked about how it's going to make some small ball to win some games. Well, and Henson, just how much, you know, I mean, y'all are all in on this. I know y'all are just what, having watched y'all a couple of times. Y'all are involved in this game. You know, does it does it frighten you to go to that small ball game instead of sitting back and getting hit away? Or, or is everybody on the team embracing it? I think most people are embracing it. I know personally bunting and small ball is one of my absolute favorite things to do because you get to – go against the defense, you get to watch them. Basically, it's just playing a game, exactly what you're doing. So I love bunting and getting to do that. It's just so fun to me. 
Well, and Arterbury, you know, being the pitcher, there's a lot of pressure in that circle. People don't get it. And it gets right. really lonely out there. So how great are your teammates about picking you up when you have a bad pitch? You know, what's that relationship like with you and your catchers, Biggs? I mean, it's pretty good. I She knows whenever I'm down on myself, she knows how to get me back up and talk to me and walk me through it. So, I mean, I mean, even Haley and Caitlin know, like, hey, you got the next one. Let that one go. That's pretty awesome. And, Caitlin, you know, I've seen y'all take some time this year, you know, during the highlights and stuff that I've been seeing on the films. Just how important is those little moments without Coach Whitney out in that circle every once in a while? They're very important. If the whole team is in and supporting each other, that just brings you up that much more. Like, if you make a mistake, they know they got you, and you got them no matter what. That's cool. Well, Coach, do we have our opponent yet? And y'all, I believe y'all are playing next Thursday. Uh, we do have our opponent. It's going to be uh, SNS Consolidated, and we're going to be playing at Little Elm on Friday at five. Okay, awesome. Well, since Henson's the firecracker, we're going to get her to get a big speech here. Let me hear you loud and proud. Tell May Pro Nation why they need to be at Little Elm Friday at five. Um, because we have not been to playoffs since 2016, and I think this is probably going to be the best year. To, That's awesome. For Mountain Watch. Well, and Atterbury, how much does this team, you know, you're not done with your season yet, but thus far, how special is this team in your heart? I mean, I enjoy being around them every day, and they're like family to me, so pretty special. That's pretty good. Well, and, you know, I always say third basemen are kind of, you know, everybody talks about shortstops and catchers being field generals. I really think third basemen set the tone. So, Caitlin, how are you going to set the tone for this next game? You know, because some of these teams here in the, the playoffs, you're going to get challenged on that bunt down the third baseline a lot, just moving runners around. You know, you're up for that challenge, right? And how, how excited are you to meet that challenge head on? I'm um, honestly, I'm really excited to see how we do during the game. And I'm just going to give it on my all. And I just know that if I miss one, Haley's there to back me up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, Coach, this group has to be a special group. I mean, y'all have played, you know, I looked at the scores and stuff of some of these bigger teams that you played, and y'all were in it. Y'all were in these games mo most of the time. I mean, like I said before, Red Oak's not a joke. Italy's not a joke. Middle Earth Heritage is not a joke. And the level of ball that y'all are playing right now from everything I've seen has been pretty darn good. How special is this group and the dedication that they've shown you and the rest of the Maypro Panther fans? I think it's one of my best teams, honestly. You know, I was, I was talking to my wife and the coaches about this, and this is a very special group of girls that I told them the other day that I'd go to battle with any time. I go, whether it's Arterbury on the pitching mound, whether it's Fry on the pitching mound, Henson playing short, she has pitched before. Whatever it takes, I'm going to go in with these girls and win. And I think they, they want it. Like Henson said, this has been a long time coming here, and they're excited. They want it. They're playing for each other, and it's, it's fun to see. It's fun to coach. It's fun to see. It's fun to see them succeed, you know, and that's what I said. It's all about them on the field. You know, we practice, 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 and when it's game time, it's them. And they've been doing a great job. Well, and touching on that right there, ladies, I'm going to give each one of y'all a chance on this one question is, what is the mark that you feel like you're leaving after making the playoffs this year and your careers and everything on May Pro Softball? Henson, we'll start with you. Um, I'd say just not giving up because I know when me and Caitlin both came into this program, it was a completely different coach, a completely different group of girls. And the group that we started with is the total opposite of what we have now. They didn't care. They were doing it to get out of PE. That was the only reason they were playing. The group that we're with now, they, they want it. They want to win. They want to play hard, and they want to work. That's pretty good. Ramon, what about you? I just think if we give it our all, like we said, if we work, then we can go out with whatever we want. We can get there. We can go to the next level as long as we're trying and give it our all. And Arterbury? It's going to take all of us. <laughs> hey, that's a pretty good slogan, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good slogan. 
Well, folks, we're, we thank you all so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Folks, if you ain't been out to see Maypro softball, you need to make it out there. You need to go to Little Elm and watch these girls win this playoff game and take this program to the next level. We're behind you, ladies. Coach, we're behind you. And we hope wish you all the best. Hit them where they ain't. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you in about two weeks after a couple wins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Elite Foot and Body Therapeutic Massage and Assisted Stretching. We push our bodies to the limit. Trying to gain that extra edge to be ready to take the field when that whistle blows. To take care of the most important equipment, your body, with massage, compression therapy, assisted stretching. So when you're ready to play, you're ready to play at an elite level. Elite foot and body, therapeutic massage and assisted stretching in Middle Lothian, Texas, off of 663. Call 214-817-8545 for your appointment today.